to the um, very first episode of Painting with Thomas. Um, I only have one camera, and so, um, you know, periodically I'll show it to you or, or we'll post pictures at the end. I'm still figuring this all out, um, but let's get started. I hope you all are having a wonderful time wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana currently, but um, I love, I used to live overseas and I enjoy the global community and a global perspective. Because uh, I, I think we all belong. We all belong here, no matter where we are. And those people who try to exert power, really, um, power comes out of fear. You know, there's a lot of fear everywhere. Um, I'm, I'm kind of grieving uh, right now. Uh, I realize, like, you know, there's part of me that misses being at the hospital. Um, I, I quit the hospital. I was a, I was working as a psychiatric um, chaplain, a clinically trained chaplains in a in a hospital setting actually have to like really do things that pastors or imams or rabbis don't do in their own congregation because we have to meet people through ev evidence based practices, and uh, and it doesn't mean that any of us who are chaplains, and I mean, there's Buddhist chaplains, there's actually pagan chaplains. You know, there's not just the standard um, Christian, um, Jewish, Islam, that I hope that more and more spiritual people who practice will uh, take up the call of chaplaincy because, man, people are in, in desperate need. and. When you're in, going through a difficult time, I've been hospitalized uh, extendedly. Uh, I was burned real bad one time, and man. And in fact, the chaplain didn't even visit me at that hospital. That's funny. But <laughs> I was living in, in Chicago. I had just graduated from Moody Bible Institute, which sits right downtown. And um, I accidentally lit a boiler it was like October 17th and it flashed me and it put me in Cook County which is like the show that ER is based off of and um, man I did not have a good experience in that hospital not only you know so everything from here here down was completely like charred and burned and the same with this because I had my sleeves halfway up or a quarter up or whatever my beard my my ears were like fried chicken some of the hair they shaved but some of it they just kind of scrubbed off man the I cannot tell you the pain that I was in my neck was done like I said my ears were like fried chicken um I go to this small hospital and uh, they, the paramedics took us, took me to the closest hospital, which was St. Elizabeth. I think it's Humble, Humble Park or where we were living at the time. It was um, California and Armitage and really just the next street over is Mozart. Um, and now I live at 1926 North Beaux-Arts. That's, there's cycles in our lives. I'm, we're going to talk about a lot of things. And we may go in like 50 different directions before you actually realize that I've painted a circle. Uh, this is a shout out to John Hart, who is my mentor. Um, but also, um, he loved me 
in a way um, that I had never been loved. So check this out. This guy named Mike Moore and I approach John, we're both young 30s, maybe Mike Lohr was a little bit younger than me, and he's a social worker. He's, he's awesome, like he totally went in a whole another direction and uh, from pastoral care, because he was like a youth ministry guy before he came to Moody. Um, so shout out to you, Mike, and to you, Rhonda, uh, I love you. Um, but Mike and John and I were sitting and it's all these tangents, right? And um, I actually just go, eh, <laughs> who cares? But for people who actually enjoy how my mind works, <laughs> John goes, no, 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 wait a second. You went from here to here. And then you went from here to here and here to here. Like he had paid attention. And it's in a moving conversation. Like I'm not the only one talking. And I just think in a way, um, it's my, my connection to the divine. Like I'm picking up and tangenting on things. And I may not even know where I'm going, which is great for like, Let's say a friend of mine wants to process what they should do. <laughs> we just start talking. And like, I didn't do anything. I was just ebbing and flowing with the conversation. At the end of the conversation, most of them have already came to the conclusion of what they're going to do. And I just go, wow, how awesome is that? You know? For other people, man, I'm a hot mess, and um, what the hell are we going to do with you? You know, growing up, I love my, my mom and dad. And Cindy, my, my uh, mom as well. Uh, Bobby was my stepmom. I love them, and I love my siblings. Um, Danielle can tell you, because she probably remembers more so. Like there was this Pentecostal church that was down from my Bobby and uh, my dad's house. I, I called Bobby mom, even though that she was my stepmom. She was, she was a good mom. Um, and I was living with them at the time with my older brother Rob and Danielle, and there was this Pentecostal church down the street. Um, and they were the kind that you, like skirts and everything, like jean skirts, the, the, the hair in the bun. But I tell you, <laughs> there was something deeply inside of me that connected with what was going on in that building, even if it was kind of messed up, you know, and it lacked love in some regards or, you know, put God in a box. Um, he was there. He was present even in their craziness. And, um, you know, when I lived in Italy, I was, I was exploring everywhere. And like, man, there was a lot of Har Hare Krishnas are in, um, I think this was Bologna, okay? And um, they come and they act like they're so peaceful, right? And that they don't have an agenda or anything. But, um, Man, if they gave you a raisin cake, they're the ones who fucking gave it to you. They want their money. So how are they any different than um, televangelists? And I'm sure like you've experienced like stuff. I mean, the hypocrisy that exists everywhere. I'm not, 
I'm honestly not preaching. I'm just making an, an observation. The one thing that really attracted me to Jesus is that in his day and age, like everyone was trying to look spiritual, kind of like the Pentecostals or uh, Hare Krishnas or uh, Buddhist monks or what, and name it. I'm just, um, you know, pagans. Uh, they have symbolism. They're, they're showing everyone that they're wearing their uh, Thor's hammer, you know. Um, it's still a cross. <laughs> I don't know, I just find that funny. Okay, here's here was my point. Jesus didn't care about looking spiritual. You know, and I'm not preaching Jesus or get saved. I'm just saying, like, as I've examined these stories, he's incredibly kind. Um but I like Gandhi too. I mean, like, you know, uh, Gandhi says, uh, be the change. Uh, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it my own. Like, be the change agent that you want to be. Like that we are agents of change, loving people. But if you don't fit in the box that you're in, you know, because someone else built you that box and put you in it. Um Find your own box. That's why you're my, I, I love chaplaincy, like, because there's this whole artistic side of me that wasn't being utilized. And like, the world thinks, or maybe it isn't, but this is my, this is my, this is the interpretation of the world that I live in is like, well, that's fine and dandy, um, but get a real job and then you can do your passion, you know? And not everyone has to be Air Jordan, right? How many players play in the NBA, right? When it comes to other arts, and I, that's an art. You know, it's an art to fly through the air and dunk a ball. It's an art to know uh, the strategy, almost like chess. You know, those, it's cool. Just don't fit, I don't fit there. And no one made room for me, you know, and I'm not playing the victim, man. I would have been more into it if someone would have said, hey, you know, yeah, don't worry about not knowing how to play. But, you know, when you when you suck at something and they pick everybody else. I'm watching that. I mean, I'm talking in past tense. I watched. But I'm thinking like, the way that I think is I, I think actively. There is a three-dimensional image in my mind as I'm even painting, you know? <laughs> I think so abstractly sometimes. And, um, and then there's a running commenta commentary of what I'm thinking about and then actively inserting my, the, um, the atmosphere that I'm um, I'm occupying at the time with the interactions with other people. It's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny. I don't know. So um, I'm with my director. There's, a, oh, there's many times with the director and like, she's asking me a question, okay? And she takes my hesitation to be that I'm lying. I'm inside having a debate with myself. Am I being 100% truthful? Or is there one smidgen of truth that, that that's not right? And I'm judging myself and like going, okay, how do I like, because you don't have to tell everyone everything, right? Like, I'm not schizophrenic, you know. I tried, those, I tried some of those medications. They didn't work for me. Um, I think I'm multiple personality syndrome that's been consolidated. And now they call that, you know, disassociative identity disorder. And there is some disassociate, dis, 
association going on. There's times that I even want to be alienated from myself, right? Because there's too many. And yet, somehow I'm functioning. I don't, I don't really get it. Um, I've experienced some crazy traumas. I, you know, as a kid, I fell off of a slide and had a traumatic brain injury. Like, I'm dyslexic. Um, so the reason why I flip letters and numbers and that sort of thing is because I'm not thinking flat plane. I'm thinking like the, <laughs> the fact that I can even drive sometimes because I'm just thinking and I can see both what I'm thinking about and then where I'm at. When I used to do drugs, you know, um, I actually felt like I was normal when I did drugs instead of like, because probably how people feel when they're high is how I feel normal, you know? But I knew it just, it didn't work. Because even though it, it, in some ways, it slowed my thinking down. Um, It's not real, right? It, it's not actually dealing with the pain or the shame or um, the need for acceptance that we have. My goodness, like why, why does this exist? Why do we even care, you know? Why do we care what people think about us? Why is there such a need for that? But thank you for bearing with me. Going, going, just trying to finish that thought about John. Like, he cared enough for me to process and to finish the thought. You know, I was frustrated because I, I don't know about you. I mean, there's something that we're all ashamed of, or or that um, we're inadequate, right? We're not Michael Jordan, but we wish we were, or fill in the blank of race car driver or, you know, musician, and you just can't play and sing, and you just have to come to the realization either, you know, you find some way to do what you need to do to, in order to feel fulfilled. And we've killed the child that lives within us. We have. Man, I remember as a as a kid, I was just so free. I don't know if it was real. I mean, like, you know, like God wasn't an imaginary friend to me. Like we had full conversations. I went the I went into the sky or something. And I don't know if it's real or if I'm crazy or um or just it's an overactive imagination. Uh, there was this um trying to think of this cartoon when I grew up as a kid and he was just so in his own little world and that like he's at class but somehow because he's next to the aquarium he is now like Jacques Cousteau and Rambo together like exploring the sea and you know and he was always on this wild adventure and it was the only person that I knew who thought like I did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Gotta make it this. So this is a um, this is a sign. It's gonna be it says little flower. It's a neighborhood. Uh, just a, kind of a couple blocks from where I live. And uh, my friend Marcos asked me to make it for one of the, his flips. And he's actually giving me a steel sign to, to paint. But I was like, well, okay, well, I'm, this is the logo for that neighborhood. And I'm trying to just like 
figure out how how I want to do it. And so I sent him a picture, then he was like, man, like, that could be for staging inside the house. And I was like, yeah, that would look really cool, like hanging on the wall or on a little easel or something. Like, yeah, I just, I love being creative. I don't know about you, like, this is what brings the my child alive. And it's so therapeutic because uh, I'm just painting from my heart, you know? I don't care. I'm just having fun. I'm not judging myself because I painted the, um, I marbleized this, this countertop and I'll add a picture of it. Um, but it was a two day process. And you start with, it doesn't look anything like marble you know but if you do enough layers and you spray water and you rag it and then you do a different stroke and you you're trying to imitate nature right but nature lives within me like and i can interpret nature right we already are i mean not only because we all have a different way of seeing the world i mean i don't know what you see or what you think right i can't I can't possibly, but there are moments that we share where we're vulnerable and we connect and we're not judging one another on how cool you are and stuff like that. And we just connect about a subject that maybe we're both passionate about, or maybe it's a divine moment or something. And beauty happens. Like in that moment, it's unreal. I just, yeah, I need that. I need that with people. I gotta get some more paint. for this uh, painting, but I didn't, so good thing this is episode one, and I'll try to edit that mistake, but if I can, I'm going to talk about the fact that I left for a minute or so, um, hope you didn't feel disrespected or anything, I just want to want to do some work here. But I would love that Marcos wanted me to do this, like, that he thought, hey, man, I want, I want a piece of your art at this house. And a sign is going to stay out, you know, it's, um, just under a seven inches by eight inches. And here in Indianapolis, a bunch of neighborhoods have these like professional signs, like Irvington is one. And, uh, and so it's kind of cool to have a, have a sign. And I made a sign for my house. Um, I live in Otterbein and uh, I went to, on the website and I, kidnapped the image and then I um, modified it a little um, and then I had it printed on metal. Which could even have this stuff. I just just thought about that.
This is so fun. Oh, we're at 25 minutes. And I don't know if this is going well or not. <clears throat> Maybe I can have some like easy jazz going on in the background. I guess I could put it on right now, to be honest. Maybe I'll uh, mix it in. I don't. I don't know. I actually don't know what I'm doing. But I think. Um, I mean, what, what brought me to the conclusion to share my thoughts with you is I think that it's useful, you know? I think um, I'm not the only one who's struggling with identity and belonging. And uh, so I just want to share that with you, you know? You're not alone in a world that's pretending everything is okay. It's okay not to be okay. It's awkward. Life is awkward. It's not easy. Yet we portray that, we tell it. We don't tell the big lie. And that's why everyone who's famous is so messed up. Doesn't fix it. Uh, I I just live a messy life. <laughs> I can't hide my crap. I just expose myself in, in many ways. And I'm not trying to be a victim or anything. And part of me just goes, I just want to be real. As, weird, as real as I can. You know? And still, there's things that I've made up about myself that are not true. You know? That maybe some things are for other people, but they're not for me. And that's not true. You just want to be loved so much. All of us. We have such a high need to be respected or cared for. How much can you manage? Being serious. How much of that stuff can we manage? What people believe about us and what they think. Going back to, to Jesus, I'm not really I'm not Bible thumping. When you read in the stories, he doesn't give a shit what anyone else thinks about him. And whether God's real or not. It was real to Jesus, or at least it's real in the story. Okay, let's just say it's not, none of this is not true. Um, you know, there is no Aslan. There is no um, Narnia. But Narnia is cool, right? Or, you know, find your favorite thing. I don't know, I just finished watching Severance and... I, I'm not sure I want to go get severed. I mean, yeah. Any and Audi. You know what this is revealing? It's just another layer of how we alienate ourselves because we're afraid. You know? We're even afraid of ourselves. Afraid that we might be too dark inside or afraid that if we're dark and we love the dark that we actually have light in us and that's irritating right i mean i have darkness that lives in me and uh, i don't know if it's an actual character or not but i'm pretty sure i have a satanist that lives inside of me and he hates me but i've heard him you know i've heard him I've heard his feelings. I've been unkind looking at myself in the mirror and he, the only way that he can get back at me is to be vicious. 
in other ways, you know, I've criticized him just looking at him, which is looking at me, you know. sometimes with all that exists in me. I, there was a pause and I was in Italy, you know, living in Italy. Lived there twice. Lived there in the United States Army. A good friend of mine, Lavelle Pratcher. We weren't having a good time. We knew how trains worked. <laughs> Our bastardized Italian got us where we needed to go, and we had experiences, you know? Uh, he and I both um, can talk to old people, you know? Laval was way, way better looking than me. Um, and I was just too weird, I guess. That's probably as weird as I am in English, but just like Italians didn't know how to take me. But I tell you, some of these old people, they love me. You know, I have people adopt me because I broke these stereotypes. I found a way to belong. Not everyone liked me, but to those that did, it was magic. There's these magical moments. Lavelle can tell you some stories, man. The world's such a small place. Um, Lavelle and I go up to Florence. I think we take someone else with us, but I'm not entirely true. I'm not sure about that. Um, we always went to Florence because, like, there was all of these American students, and sometimes we just needed to be cool around Americans, and we could more than get our way around uh, in Italian culture. I mean, I'm being serious. Like we could get our, we could more than get our needs met. And I still don't speak Italian perfect. I don't. Um, I need help in that in that area, but I have no problem like talking and in the most bastardized way. Uh, um, but you know, I actually don't communicate all that great in English either. I mean, I say some pretty profound things. That's all I can say is like, there's these moments of, wow, that was really profound. Um, but people don't realize I'm as just as profound. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? That was beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. I guess back to old people, they're, they just want someone to give them time. And I guess that love actually came from my grandparents uh, living, taking over a, uh, this old folks home called the Faith Home back in uh, Tunnel under New York, just outside of Buffalo. And uh, I learned how to take care of people. And ju just by being, which I'm really good at that, like I'm good at being, um, easygoing, I don't, you don't have to entertain me. I have to get another thing of paint.
Ooh. Well, I didn't find what I was looking for, but I found something. Combination of watercolor and acrylic paint. That's what we're doing. If you're not, if, if you had not um, tried being artistic, I, you know, I venture to say just like, then use adult coloring books, you know, or whatever, but like you can paint. It's kind of like ratatouille, like anyone can cook. Like anyone who can, anyone can learn something and maybe you can't cook um, Hell's Kitchen, you know, but you can learn to make something and be passionate about something. I suck at baking. And, um, and so I had to take home Mac. I could make curtains. You know, I can make, I can sew, iron and press things, but I can't, um, <laughs> can't bake very well, but Recently, I'm trying to bake. I'm going to learn. I can do it. I don't have to be afraid of it. This is really fun. I'm glad that you guys are here with me uh, doing this. I'm sure like, you know, again, this is my first episode. So, I mean, hopefully I will learn how to do this better and uh, less complicated and So um, I just want to show you, like that's what it looks like. Little flower. I think it's gonna be a really be beautiful sign. Um, I'm still figuring out like how to um, how to sell my artwork digital prints on online like it's this whole thing is um you know i had an etsy page i technically when i'm making this video still have an etsy page but i've brought more traffic there than etsy has i just don't know how to sell myself and when i found passion uh io passion app or passion dot io um i had this spark and i was really depressed at the time like i'm serious like i was kind of at the end of my rope like i did not that i carried on and and did it obviously i'm here right um but dude i was so close just absolutely struggling not knowing how i was going to pay the bills or do things i think it's going to be better somehow i show it this way and then this way like that that we're having a conversation you know because i'm sure like actually as you see the painting come alive in the hour that we spend together, like, then, like, maybe your thoughts are ebbing and flowing as well. And you're thinking about the difficulty that you're having or you're, you're, you two are like processing, um, that we're processing our thoughts together. And, or maybe you're drawn, you know, maybe we both draw at the same time or paint at the same time 
And that way, um, uh, I periodically show me yours and you show me, uh, or I show you mine and you, and you show me yours. Like maybe that's how we do this painting together. But I also thought like maybe it's, it'd be cool to like, um, from people who would like to paint with me in person, like with that we do a Zoom call or whatever, we do it through the app. I'm not sure how all this works. I'm still trying to figure it out. But we're gonna paint. I'm gonna teach you how to break dance if you wanna learn how to break dance. I don't do floor work, but I pop and lock and And I wasn't doing that. There's so many things that when I was working at, in the hospital, like I, uh, I was missing because it's part of me. It's part of who I am. And I gotta have that in my life too. Gotta have painting, gotta have um, art, obviously of all kinds. I gotta have dance. I went and met out with uh, Marcos and Susan and had such a good time like dancing the electronic dance music and it was that guy um, who remixed Phil Collins and Michael Jackson. Remember the time when we first met, maybe you've seen it on Instagram or some other social media platform. He's a mass DJ, which was so cool. I hadn't danced like that in a long time. I really, I really, really needed it. And so I have to incorporate going to a club and break dancing. And then, you know, teach it on here. That's mind, body, and spirit is the focus of kind of theme, if you will, of this app. One-stop shop. Everything that I'm about is important to me. It's going to be here. creating a community. Creating community where we are, whether it's at the office or at home, being a mom or dad, being a great Aunt. Or uncle. Or you're not choosing a side, so you're non binary. And I'm not trying to laugh, I'm just like, I guess I remember not wanting to choose a side. I just wanted to be something else just didn't fit into the box. And I think that that's what they said, that what, you know, what they are experiencing. Yeah. I'm a they too. I'm a he, him. Well, these are the, these are the conflicts I had in high school, believe it or not being around in high school trying to freaking figure out how to belong with myself and others. And I'm finally getting the vocabulary, you know, finally, you know, I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not trying to hurt people's feelings by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just gonna talk the way that I talk and it's, I will hurt someone's feelings, of course. Some people have no problem hurting my feelings. 
as long as the topic is like their pet theology, their pet philosophy. And, you know, as long as I bend to their box, then that's, that's fine. I want to be open-minded and they're not open-minded at all. Because then, you know, they don't like Christians and the Christians don't like them because whatever, or Muslims or Jewish people or, you know, Muslims, Hindu, Sikh, pagans, right? They want to belong. They want to just be able to do what they are comfortable doing. But, you know, in each category, like, some people are just, no, they want everyone to be the way that they are. And some of us just want to be able to just be ourselves, right? Not everyone is a militant. But there are militants in every single camp, even with people who say that they have no faith at all. You know? It's like, don't hate something that you know nothing about, you know? And it, even if you've been hurt by it, because the whole group was never that whole. You know. But even I'm an asshole. I don't know if I have to not use that word. But sometimes it's true. You know? And other times someone else is being that to me. I'm really interested to see how this goes and like if it's something that people really want or it's an awful idea. But when I used to um, do these spirituality groups for the adolescents, they were always asking me, man, if you had a podcast, I'd listen to you. Well. And I was trying to get other people to do a podcast with me because it's really hard to do it by yourself, to be honest. It just is, you know? I mean, it's, if there was something to ebb and flow off of, it wouldn't be so boring. Or maybe this isn't boring to you. I mean, there's, there's times that those adolescents were like, they were so quiet and I'm like, okay, am I, is this okay? And they were like, yeah, but there's, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I know I'm not. Like, I, I can't even pretend that like, this is everybody's, maybe I've already driven you crazy, you know? But there's been times where people are like, no, it was, man, it, it connected with me. Like, I got it. And, uh, and of course you feel special in those moments, right? You're like, okay, instead of me, uh, and this is kind of going to the beginning again, like, instead of me, like, going, God, why did you make me this way? Why am I so, so incredibly fucked up? I don't belong here, uh, you know? Going back to, like, people dealing with suicide, like, and not feeling like they don't belong. Which really sucks, man. But if you're on here, most likely than not, you've experienced, like, being rejected and wanting to just belong. And so I hope, you know, I hope this is a place of belonging for people and not a place where you feel alienated and rejected because that would really 
defeat the whole purpose of why I'm doing this. My, I'm not intentionally saying things to like hurt people's feelings. Because I'm not even thinking like, eh, there probably is times that I'm like going, second guessing and going, oh man, I probably shouldn't have said that. But usually it comes late and I have grown, I think. You know, I'm not as, my thinking has been affected by when someone has been vulnerable enough to go, wow, that really hurt, you know? And I was somehow able to um, not be defensive and actually own that and not go further into like shame or whatever, you know? But it just takes courage for people to put down their ego. Realize that most of us are just doing the best we can with what we have. Even though people who are purposely out hurting people, you know, that they know they're hurting people and they're doing it anyway. Um, they got that way somehow, you know. They were hurt. They were hurt here. So I have to try to understand who hurt them, who hurt us. Not everyone can be fixed, obviously, like. Or fixed how we would like it to be, I guess, is the, what I'm really not. And don't we even have a view of ourselves that we wish we were different, better, stronger? Wish we had more of something. I might be the only one. And that is a possibility, like, I don't think I'm right. I'm just trying to figure it out. If this resonates with you and that somehow you too are trying to figure it out and find a way to get along and belong, then I hope we can share space here. I hope this can kind of be a safe place for you and for me. is really coming out pretty well like it's I'm pretty happy with it actually
Okay, well, um, obviously I kind of lost my spot there. Um, I'm not Bob Ross. <laughs> I like that guy. It's cool. No happy clouds. I mean, there might be a few happy clouds, but um, not like him. Can't replace him. Dang it, where is that though? So no matter where you are, peace to you. I wish you a happy healing and uh, that you become more and more naked and unashamed. Peace. Ciao.